let's jump right into it. Question number one. A SOC analyst is struggling to monitor security events because siloed tools generate multiple disconnected alerts. The organization plans to implement a centralized platform to consolidate event visibility. Which approach would best solve the analyst issue? Let's jump right into it. SPOG. Do you remember what SPOG stands for? That is a answer on the board. Then we have DLP. DLP, data loss prevention. I feel like we can get rid of DLP. I feel like data loss prevention is probably not going to be the best answer here. Let's get rid of that one. And then we have SOAR, software orchestration and automated response. I feel like we can get rid of SOAR. And then we have SEAM. We have SEAM. Top two answers on the board are going to be a SPOG and a SEAM, if you remember what those are. Give you a second for that one. All right. This is your chance to pause it. If you said SEAM, you are 100%, well, incorrect. Uh, security Incident and Event Manager, while it often incorporates a SPOG, single pane of glass, or in some cases called a UTM, right? That single pane of glass, that's going to provide us that centralized platform to consolidate all of our event visibility. Uh, that, that specifically may be a part of a seam, but the better answer is SPOG, our SPOG, our single pane of glass. That's going to be our answer. There it is. Question number two. A newly deployed application allows users to reset passwords without verifying ownership of the associated email address. A security consultant exploited this flaw during testing to reset the admin account password. What is the primary issue identified? What's the primary issue identified that, with this? All right, let's start with A, authentication failure. Did we suffer an authentication failure? Probably, probably, maybe. A weak password policy, probably not, right? If we lead the question, it says security consultant exploited this flaw during test to reset the admin account. That is not a weak security, that is a flaw. We can get rid of that. Insecure design, is it insecurely designed? If we read the question, that is another good answer. And then improper input validation. Uh, not what we're talking about here. So our top answers are gonna be A and C. A and C are gonna be the top answers on the board. If you said authentication failure, well, you'd be incorrect. We exploited a flaw. And by exploiting a flaw, we have a security design problem or an insecure design. That's the problem. That's going to be our major issue. And that's going to be our answer. Insecure design. Question number three. A phishing simulation reveals that 40% of employees clicked on a malicious link and a fake email. Leadership decides to implement a targeted program to improve employee awareness. What is the best remediation strategy? What is the best remediation strategy? Uh, a, policy revision. I love policy revisions, but they don't really do anything. They just say, hey, this is how we're going to do something. We expect employees to follow it, but it doesn't It doesn't really fix anything. Uh, it really doesn't. So again, not gonna be our main, our main strategy to fix it. Automation, I love automation. Can we automate remediation strategies across the board? Maybe block those emails from coming in. I like automation. Training, do we need to train our employees better? Maybe allow them to identify the problems, another great answer. And then D, penetration testing. I don't feel like penetration testing is gonna do anything in this specific instance because we're looking to stop people from clicking on things. That's not what a penetration test is going to do. They're gonna find vulnerabilities, they're gonna exploit vulnerabilities, not gonna be the answer. Uh, B and C, B and C are the top answers on the board. What is the best remediation strategy? Well, if you said training, well, you'd be correct. Training is going to be the best answer, much better than automation. Uh, and the reason is because training, effective training, effective training will stop or prevent more uh, social engineering attacks than anything else than anything else. Matter of fact, 93% of all attacks, all successful attacks, are actually linked back to human error and social engineering. So training is going to be the best answer on this one. Question number four, what is the primary risk associated with system? In this report, we see a system scan. We see an old server, Windows Server 2003, unsupported software with a high risk. We have privilege escalation. I love privilege escalation, but I can see two problems here, and privilege escalation is not one of the main ones. We see legacy systems. Legacy systems, we do annotate a Windows Server 2003. We are now in 2025. I don't think that's going to be the right answer. Or I should say, uh, definitely not going to be a good operating system. My apologies. Uh, so B, legacy system, definitely a, a good answer. Uh, C, unsupported protocols. Uh, we're not seeing anything in this log supporting that, so that can't be the right answer. And then D, unpatched software. We do see vulnerability detected is unsupported software. That's going to be B and D, the top answers on the board for this one. Give you your opportunity to pause the video. If you said unpatched software, you'd be incorrect. Legacy systems, Windows Server 2003, way old, way old. 
Uh, which means that that is going to be the biggest problem on our system. We need to get rid of that. We need to update. That's going to be our problem. All right, question number five, a security audit. Uh, the following observation is made concerning a web domain. We see the certificate is self-signed and issued by secure.local. We see TLS version 1.2 is being utilized. And common name does not match the website's domain, which is secure.company.com. What is the primary vulnerability identified in the audit? We have three items, but which one is the primary? Which one is the primary? Self-signed certificate. There is a self-signed certificate, but mm, is that a major issue? I'm going to put that one on the back burner. We have a certificate mismatch. The common name does not match the secure domain. Another great answer. We have a weak cipher suite. TLS version 1.2 is really not that weak. Uh, would I prefer 1.3? Yeah, but 1.2 is not horrible, especially when compared to the other two, so we get rid of that one. And then an untrusted root authority. There's nothing in our observation that identifies an untrusted root authority, which means A and B. A and B are going to be the top answers on the board for this one. If you guessed, if you guessed self-signed certificate, you would be 100% incorrect. Incorrect. It's not right. It's certificate mismatch. Why is a certificate mismatch better than self-signed? We can have a self-signed in our own internal network, and it doesn't tell us anything. It just says a web domain. But a certificate mismatch, that's an issue. And so B, B is going to be our big answer on the board. That's it for me for tonight. This is Dr. K. As always, I hope that you like, subscribe, and comment. We'll see you next time.